What's going on guys? In this video, I'm going to show you how we make our tapered exhaust cones. These are 20 gauge 304 stainless steel cones. We're going to cover everything from making your template to cutting your pieces out, rolling the cones, and then getting them tacked up. So I'm gonna show you guys how to lay out your template. I already have mine done. I have a three inch outlet, engine seven eighth inlet by 10 inch cone. So we're gonna do another practice template here because your guys' sizes will probably be different. So let's just say we wanted a two inch inlet by a 12 inch long cone and a 3.5 inch outlet. So first we're gonna wanna find our widest part of the cone. So we're gonna go 3.5 times pi, which is 3.14. So we're gonna 10.99, so call it 11 inches. We'll go up to the top, mark out 11 inches. 11 inches, we'll draw ourselves a line. All right, so there's your exit measurement. So now we need to find our cone shape and our inlet measurement. So we're gonna wanna find the halfway point between our template. So five and a half obviously is half of 11. So we're gonna find our center of our template here. Okay, now we're gonna calculate our inlet, which if our inlet is a two inch OD, we're gonna take two times pi 3.14, that's 6.28. That's gonna be our dimension for our inlet on the template. So we're gonna go divided by two. So 3.14, ironically, we need to measure over from the center line. So we're gonna grab our handy dandy caliper. 3.14, beautiful. And obviously when you guys are making your cone template, you're gonna take your time. And we're just speeding through this one for educational purposes. And you're gonna use a new permanent marker that writes really nice. Okay, so here's your basic cone template. None of these are exact, but this is gonna get you really close. This is 12 inches long, like we said, two inch inlet, three and a half inch outlet, okay? So now when you go to roll these, you're gonna need to put a little bit of a radius in here. Otherwise you're gonna be cutting a bunch of material away. I just know it um, from doing it enough, but usually if you go about a half inch, um, on all sides, I'll show you what I mean. That'll get you in the, in the ballpark, but it depends on the cone, but it's gonna look like this. When you roll out your, you're gonna wanna cut your template like this. Cause it's saving you a cutting step of once you have it rolled. So you're gonna do the same thing on the backside. And again, when you guys are doing yours, you're gonna take your time. So it's absolutely perfect. But this is the idea that you're going for. So there's your template. You're gonna cut this out on the Beverly Shear. All right, let's start cutting out our pieces. We're using a tool called a Beverly shear. This is an amazing shear for sheet metal as you can cut in a straight line, you can cut radiuses, and you can cut all different materials. Let's cruise through these one at a time. Go as straight as possible, but we're also gonna sand the edges. Here are the pieces cut out. 
let's sand up our edges a little bit. Don't get too carried away because if you get the edge too hot, this thin 20 gauge material will kind of wrinkle up on you and you don't want that. Plus, if your shear lines were pretty straight, if you cut straight, you shouldn't have to sand much, but you do want to do some sanding so um, you have a nice straight square seam for welding. Our pieces are all sanded, laid out, and ready to be rolled. So we're gonna use a slip roller to roll these cones. And you can get a slip roller in all different shapes, sizes. They made them way back in the day. You can get new ones. As you can see, mine is an older model. How the tool works is it has three rollers that are all adjustable. And depending on how you have them adjusted is how tight the rolled part is gonna be. You can also do them asymmetrical. So you can put a taper in the rollers to make your cone taper. So there's no right or wrong way to do this in my opinion. As long as the cone is round and true at the end, you do it however works best for you. How I'm doing it in this first clip is I'm grabbing each piece and I'm putting a nice bend in the edge. So we have a good starting point before I start rolling out the center of the cones. All right, you can see each piece here has a bend towards the edge. And then now we're gonna start rolling the center. So just gradually, just little bites. So we're gonna roll them through and you need to kind of rotate the piece in the roller as you're doing it. And sometimes you need to use a rubber mallet or a hammer. So just slowly start rolling the edges out and you're gonna start increasing that radius and moving the back roller of the slip roller up each time a couple turns on the knobs to make the roll tighter and tighter. And again, this is a style you're gonna kinda have to develop yourself you need to get to know your own machine, your own roller, and it depends on your material thickness. All right, so you'll see we're getting really close here. That was probably about four passes on the roller per part, just gradually getting it closer and closer. So now we're gonna do just a little bit of hammer work to finish out the edges. I like to use a tube and I start with a rubber mallet. So the idea is just to finish hammering the radius in those edges and just be easy on it. You'll get the hang of this too when you start rolling your own cones. And then at the end, switch to a ball peen hammer to kind of put a straight edge on that seam. Okay, here's our rolled cones. Nice and round, you can see the hammer work finished off the radius and we're ready to pull these together and tack them up. Very nice cones. So for the tacking process, I just like to simply use basic hose clamps, two of them, tighten them down, bring your seams together. This is not rocket science, but hose clamps work pretty good. So you're gonna pull that seam together, get it nice and tight. Okay, our seam is pulled together. As you can see, pretty basic. Let's tack this one up. I'll usually put about three tacks on with the hose clamps and then I'll take the clamps off and put a few more on. I think a tack every inch, inch and a half is more than sufficient. All right, let's get cruising here. We're gonna grab a cone put the clamps on, pull the seam together, get a couple tacks put in place, grab the next one, tack it up, you get the idea. If you need a little hammer work, bring it over to the uh, tube and do some hammering on the seam. But we're cruising. All right, here's our finished cones. Hopefully you're able to get some value from this video and you know how to make your template. You can make these exhaust cones in all different shapes, sizes, inlets, outlets, lengths. Um, but now you get the idea. So here's another look at the cones. Very nice. Thank you for watching.